elevation. All right, kids, welcome to lesson 4.4, taking a look at linear function patterns. And we'll continue our basic skills review, looking at rounding decimals um, and the place value and converting fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. It's all easy, very simple steps. Let's go forward. Our first problem, we're going to look at rounding 1 and 27 hundredths to the tenths place. First thing you need to do is mark where the tenths place is. Now you can look to the right. The 7 actually tells you what to do with the 2. It's above 5, so we're going to round it up. Rounding to the tenths place turns this into 1.5. Three. Let's round this decimal to the thousandths place. I will underline that here, and you can do the same. This is our thousandths place. We need to go ahead and look to the right of that and be able to round this. This is important to remember. When we round 9 up, it turns to 10. So we're actually going to have to add 1 to this right here. Watch. We have 2.4. Instead of having a 6, the 9 is rounded. This right here is rounded up 1, so it actually turns this into a 7. Okay? This 7 right here rounds the thousandths place, and it rounds it up 1, Okay, which adds 1 to this side. So now we have 2.47. This is our answer. Okay, in this problem, we're going to go ahead and add these decimals together. You can see this as money. Um, and let's go ahead and remember that we need to make sure that our decimal places are lined up. And then we can add and carry over if we need to. So let's do this. We have 4 plus 3, and that is 7. And we have 1 plus 2, that is 3. Let's put our decimal place down. And 4 plus 3, that is 7. We are not done yet. We need to go ahead and make sure that we round to the tenths place. So let's look at the 3. That is our tenths place. And look to the 7 to see what we do with that 3. The 7 tells us to round up. So our end answer will be 7.4. Now let's go ahead and take a fraction and turn it into a decimal. This is pretty straightforward. We're going to use long division to help us do this. We can see that 4 fifths means that 4 is being divided by 5. We can go ahead and put that um, like this. And we can start our division. 5 does not go into 4. So let's put our decimal point down. Continue our line over here. And let's go ahead and say, let's add a 0 here and here. Let me do that. 5 goes into 40, a total of 8 times. 8 times 5 is 40. We're zeroed out. So our answer is 0 0.8 or 8 tenths. Let's divide 3 by 8 to get this fraction of 3 eighths into a decimal form. We can ask ourselves, 8, does it go into 3? No, it does not. So we'll put our decimal point and a 0 here and add a 0 here and say, does 8 go into 30? It does. It goes a total of 3 times. 8 times 3 is 24. We'll go ahead and subtract, and that gives us 6. We can ask us, does 8 go into 6? It does not. We need to add another 0. So we go down and drop this 0 here. 8 does go into 60. It goes in a total of 7 times. 7 times 8 is 56. We will subtract, and we will get 4. Remember that you cannot subtract 6 from 0, so you're borrowing from here, making this a 5. And then making that a 10, 10 minus 6 is 4. Does 8 go into 4? It does not. Another 0. Let's drop this down here. 8, does it go into 40? Yes, it does. A total of 5 times. 5 times 8 
is 40. We subtract and we zero out. So our answer in this box turns this into 0. Point, let me try that again. 0 0.375. So that's just your answer to that problem. One seventh is a decimal that actually takes a little bit of distance. It uh, continues to move on. If you use your calculator, it goes on and on and on. Let's do this by hand. 7 into 1 does not happen. We'll put our decimal point up and we'll say 7 into 10 goes once. Okay, and we will subtract and we'll get 3. And 7 does not go into 3, so we need another 0. Let's drop that down. 7 goes into 30. It goes in 4 times. 7 times 4 is 28. We'll subtract. We know that 30 minus 28 is 2. 7 does not go into 2. We need another 0. And 7 goes into 20. It goes in twice. And that is 2 times 7 is 14. And if we subtract that, um, we will get 6. Okay. 7 does not go into 6. We need another 0. We drop that down. 7 goes into 60 um, 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. Let's subtract that, and we will get 4. Okay. 7 does not go into 4, so we'll drop another 0 down. 7 does go into 40. goes into five times, and you get 35. Now, we realize that we have five left over down here, way at the bottom. We could continue to go on, but I'm going to say let's round this to the thousands place. Our thousands place, this is tenths, this is hundredths, and this is our thousands. The two is the thousands, so let's look at the eight which tells us what to do with the 2. Our answer, when we look at that 8, is going to be 0 0.14, and we need to round that 2 to 3, and we have just come up with our answer. Oh, uh, what's this word right here? It's a secret. Little tidbit you guys need to check out here, making sure that you remember looking at these charts that if our intervals are constant, um, if they're regular intervals, meaning the same distance between each jump, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3, that's up by 1 each time. We have 4, 8, 12, 16, that's up by 4 each time. Both of these moving at a constant um, interval, interval, sorry, that means it is linear. This one over here would not be linear because you have... Um, the y value moving at different intervals. 1 to 6, 1 to 2, to 6 to 24 is, is a, a different kind of interval than the 1, 2, 3, or 4, or even the 4, 8, 12, or 16. So just remember this, you guys. If you have, um, if you have a, uh, a line, if you have um, a line as a graph, it is a linear function. Otherwise, it would not be. I can move my little picture, but I can't. Take a look at this right here, you guys. This is a line. This would be a linear function. This is not a linear function. You see this little s? Okay? Nonlinear. They ask for you, is it linear or nonlinear? It is linear if it is a line. It is nonlinear if it's anything else. Simple. Remember that. Tomorrow we'll do some more together. Easy as pie. See ya.